All right, welcome everyone to something a little different tonight. Um, it should look all the same to you, fingers crossed. But tonight is the first time I'm streaming on a Windows PC. So will it work? It should work. It should work. Yeah, as, as many of you guys know, I recently bought a legit MacBook Pro. So no more doing this Hackintosh business. And one of the drawbacks of doing Hackintosh was that I actually did not have any hardware encoding. So everything was so slow on my end. But this time on a Windows PC, everything everything seems to be going smoothly so far. I did have to set up a few things um, using Streamlabs OBS right now. Um, hopefully the audio is fine here. Let's let's play some tunes and hopefully that kicks in. Along with this Christmas shirt from Canon Keys, Canon Keys also sent me a couple keycaps. So first and foremost is this guy right here. They're a nice PBT classic beige. There we go. This is the nice PBT classic beige courtesy of Canon Keys. So yeah, kind of a flimsy, flimsy cover here. <laughs> Not really too good, but oh look. It's a Canon Keys switch puller. Interesting. Look at that. Yeah, these were Christmas presents from Canon Keys. Yeah, look at that. Just your typical beige set. Beige, vintage looking set right here. Um, I do have a video coming up detailing the differences between Nice PBT, Milky Way, EPBT, e and some of the differences that I've seen between them. So yeah, stay tuned for that video. Yeah, this is super flimsy. Look at that. It just like opens up like that. Not really good for keycap storage. And as you guys can see, look at that. <laughs> so yeah, the next set that Canon Keys sent me. There we go. There we go. This one is nice pbt enchanted forest Ooh, let's see that's different from the geek arc t yeah it's a different shade of green but will this shade work better with the emery what do you guys think do you guys think this shade works better with the emery or geek arc t neely says t future jacob says yeah it's hard to tell. I feel like neither of them really match. Like I do have GMK Kaiju, right? I think GMK G GMK Kaiju matches this green better, but you know, I don't want to have like everyone with an Emery 65 and Kaiju making that con that like combination. And so this one seems to be better packaged than the last. Ooh, I like these cream colors right there. Cool. Let's see. I don't have too many green boards, so I don't know what I would put this on. Would probably look good on a black board or a white board. See, let's go look at some of these novelties here. Look at that. I think, I think this is like a tulip or something. A tulip. Crystals, butterfly. Very nice. Alright, let's go put this away. But yeah, those are the two key sets that I got. I did get a few other things keyboard related, but we'll probably save that for like another time. Let's unbox the NK87 first. There we go. If you guys caught my NK67 review, you know that I mentioned that that was probably one of the best value boards at the time. And it kind of spurred this whole revolution of cheaper 65%, such as the KV67 Lite, the um, Icky 68, and all that. So I'm really hoping that the NK87EE will spur that same kind of revolution. This is a nicer box than I re remember the NK67 coming in. Yeah, look at that. This is much higher quality, much more presentable. There we go. Carrying case included. That's nice. And what are these? These are switch puller cable. Oh, so one is a switch puller, one is a keycap puller. Cool. Yeah, this is the same type of bag that the NK67 came in. Is it black or not? Woo. It's black. I got a black one. Keyboard assembly. Okay, cool. You have a QR code that tells you how to do it. Let's take a look at this guy. It's awfully... Definitely a lot lighter than I thought it would be. This really looks just like an NK67, but in TKL form. 
Yeah, it's even got those three indicator LEDs, just like the NK67. So yeah, pretty much all the same. And it looks like it's using those T3 screws, I think. How was the quality? The quality is pretty much the same as the NK67. If you guys want to catch my review on that, uh, one of the things I pointed out was that there were lots of cracks in mine. So I wonder if that's going to be the same as this, but I won't know until I open it up. It was a long day though. I feel like every time I get back from a vacation, even if it's like a company, you know, federal vacation, there's always so much work to do. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. I think all the screws are out there. Does it pop out now? There we go. All these clips. Gasket. <laughs> there are gaskets here now. Well, they seem like gaskets, but they feel like more than they're just little rubber pads. <laughs> okay. Take this out. Yep, it's still the same kind of tray, like pseudo tray mount slash top mount hybrid. Same design as always. And here's the Yankar PCB STM microcontroller. I am not seeing an ESD protection chip on this, which is interesting because I know the latest editions of the NK67 did. Oh look, there's actually some padding, some padding between the plate and the PCB. Let's see, these stabs are def are screw-ins. I can see the screw, so that's good. Reset button on the bottom there. I'm a big fan of Yankar PCBs. I usually trust his his designs and all that. But like, if you were a big fan of the NK67, you're gonna like this too. One thing with the NK667 though is that I felt it was too stiff feeling. It wasn't the most comfortable of typing experiences. So I'm actually worried that we might experience the same thing here. But because it, it it is a longer board, maybe we'll get additional flex. We'll see. If you like the TKL, or if you like the, the NK87, but don't like how it's high profile, you can just take off the top and you suddenly have low profile. <laughs> right? You can have a low profile board just by taking off the top. Let's see how those lights look. There we go. See that? Yeah. This is the way to get a low profile board. Low profile NK87. <laughs> Quick two minute take on it. It's basically an NK67 in TKL form factor. So with that said, I expect the same strength and and unfortunately the same weaknesses. I do see a couple things here that are improved over the NK67, such as we finally have screw and stabilizer support. Um, the previous NK67 always just had plate, plate mount stabilizer support and a lot of people complained about that. So this does still support plate mount stabs if you still wanna go that way. One thing that I saw that I wasn't too pleased about was that it did not have ESD protection by the USB-C port. Of course, I only know one form of ESD protection, so Yankar might have put in one that I am unfamiliar with. Um, the reason why I point that out is because on his newest NK67 version, he does have an ESD protection chip there. Packaging is much better than the NK67. But overall, I do expect it to just be like a bigger NK67. Let's get to the Freebird. So the Freebird also comes with a carrying case. Keeps for all. I would say that this carrying case is a little sturdier than the Novel Keys one. This was actually like a hard shell, whereas the Novel Keys one was kind of soft. There we go. Ooh, look at that. Nice presentation as well. well. I'm gonna move that keyboard out of the way. Let's see, USB. No, wait, this is not USB. This is the gasket. 
It goes around it along with extra screws and stabilizer. Black PCB like the NK87. It is using an AVR microcontroller at Mega 32U4 with the reset button right next to it. I am locating an ESD protection chip right there, right next to the USB-C port. So hooray. KL hot swap sockets. What else? Basically like your typical PCB, no in-switch lighting of any sorts. Doesn't seem to have any indicator LEDs as well. But yeah, very generic TKL. I believe this is a palm plate. Looks like palm. Very nice. No, I do have to check. I do have to check on this. Some plates are a little too tight, so I'm using Duroc Palms here. Good quality plates. That's good. But people say that I should be getting a white one. I got a black one. Check that out. And I have two black boards. Okay. Oh, I like how this curves. I like, the, I like how this curves right here. But what I'm upset about is that it's wind key. I mean, it's a wind keyless. <laughs> I seem to be getting lots of wind keyless TKLs, and I'm not, and, and I'm definitely a a a wind key user. <laughs> Anodization looks pretty good. Do I see any streaking or scratches anywhere? Okay, some machining marks, especially on the on the inside ledge here, but nothing to be concerned about. This tiny machining marks, streakings in the anodization as well, but so far it's all inside. Yeah, I see like, actually that looks like a scratch. That's a long scratch right there. All the colors are e-coded. Okay, so it's not anodization. It's just e-coding. Right there, there it is. Is that scratch? And there's another tiny one over here that's that's not as visible. Okay, cool. Let's go look at the bottom case. Okay. Any machining marks that I'm seeing? Yep, actually no, no machining marks, just streaking along the edge there. Anything on the outside here? Nope, nothing on the outside either. Not bad, Keys Brawl. Like, how much is, is, is this board? Like, two, 200 something? 225? Yeah, this is not bad at all. This is really good. I'm impressed with the quality that I'm seeing so far. This is, this is really good. Okay. I am very pleasantly surprised about this board. Like, I know, um, Keeps for All. Like, like their main goal is to is to try and make these custom keyboards more more accessible to the community, but not in a way that that they're selling you crap, that they're selling you something that's obviously cheap. Like if I knew nothing about the community, like if I wasn't as involved as I am now, looking at this board here, I'd be like, wow, this must be like a really expensive board. No, if if this was available when I first entered the community. This might have been like a three, four hundred dollar board. <laughs> they even have free shipping above ten dollars. Dang. Yeah, this is so nice. I am very impressed. Super impressed with with like how they've done this. Two hundred twenty-five. Jeez. See that that's that's not something that I expect to find on a two hundred twenty-five dollar board. Like 225, I would expect maybe KP Republic quality. This is Keeps for All has definitely exceeded that. If Keeps for All does a 75, I'm all in. I would probably be in there with you. It, it's like I know a few streamers have already built theirs. Um, is this board more of a higher pitch slash clacky sounding boards, or is this more of a thocky board? Does anyone know? I think it's been more on the clack side, higher pitched. Okay. That means my wife will probably like it. So after I build it, I'm going to have her come in and have her sample it again. More clack, more poppy. Clacky with gummy o-ring, deep with top. Ooh, okay. 
I may want to go the deep route. I don't have a really thocky TKL yet. Like if they can do this with 225, what happens if Keeps for All starts selling like something more premium, right? Normally when people are trying to come up with something that's budget, they don't really worry about the curves and stuff like that. They just, um, does this make it like a rectangle? Give it sharp edges and you'll, and you'll be fine because it's easier to machine, right? But this one actually has sexy curves. See, Messio says, you can build this using them. Oh, really? I can use a Jane plate for this? Interesting. Okay. So you're saying I can take my Jane, take the internals out, put it in here. Okay. With that alone, I think this board is going to be a huge hit. Wow. Okay. That's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. This is this is amazing. I am impressed. Um, I'm gonna say I'm more impressed with the Freebird than I am with the eight, with the NK87 EE. So yeah, I'm looking forward to build this on Thursday. Looking forward to building this on Thursday. I think to make this a $400 board, what would elevate this? Is if Freebird added, or sorry, not Freebird, if Keeps for All put like a brass weight in here. Brass weight on the bottom, maybe a different plates available, brass plate, copper plate, um, what else? Maybe some fancy logo over here and indicator LEDs. <laughs> it's like, I wish that they had indicator LEDs right there. That would be good. There's the Apollo TKL. Let's see, what were the specs on that again? Let me go look. I think the Apollo TKL, if I remember correctly, was like 400-ish. Oh, here we go. 450 for the Apollo TKL. Group by date is still TBA. Based on the quality of this, I'm going to be... I'm going to be keeping an eye on the Apollo TKL. Well, thanks guys for joining in on my unboxing stream. Um, just as a quick recap of what I did, I unboxed two keycaps from Canon Keys. Um, there was Enchanted Forest and their regular nice PBT beige. Both sets look pretty good, but I don't have a keyboard that I can think of right now that would really make the most use out of their aesthetic. Also unboxed the Novel Key 8K NK87EE which in my opinion is basically just a larger NK67. And then I also unboxed the Freebird TKL, which for 225 is a pretty damn impressive board. So tune in this coming Thursday, 7.30 p.m. PDT, when I build this. Thanks guys for joining in, and I'll see you when I see you. Goodbye everyone.